You might wonder what went so wrong with a man like Harshad Mehta, riding so high on confidence, power, and money. Till now, for most people, the scam could be explained in a couple of lines. Harshad Mehta took money from the banks, played the stock market, and then could not return the money when the stock market crashed. The actual story is so complex that the series Scam 1992 could be run easily for another 10 seasons. The central figure of the scam remains Harshad. and the 1992 security scam is often referred to as the Harshad Mehta scam which would either be giving him too much credit or making him the scapegoat depending on how you look at it so what does one make of Harshad was he a skilled stock picker or just a clever salesman who was able to sell tall stories or a hustler who was exploiting the cracks in the system or a convenient fall guy for those at the highest level of power A fair answer would be that he was a little of everything but by no means a superman who could move India's stock market at will. Like the stock market operators before and after him, he only controlled a handful of stocks which were important enough to influence the direction of the index and thereby the mood in the market. Keeping all these facts in mind, in this video, we will be comparing the acts of Harshad Mehta with someone who we all know really well. This man who we are going to talk about filed for bankruptcy at the age of 25 after his first company collapsed and then went on to open his second company which happened to oversee investments of more than 1 billion dollars yes you guessed it right we are talking about jordan belford also known as the wolf of wall street to give you some perspective both harshad and jordan used the strategy of pump and dump pump and dump is a scheme that attempts to boost the price of a stock typically small so-called microcap companies through recommendations based on false or misleading or greatly exaggerated statements the owners of this scheme already have an established position in the company's stock and sell their positions right after the hype leads to an increase in the share price as we see in the series scam 1992 harshad caused the share price of acc to go up from rupees 200 to almost rupees 9000 in no time and that's a return of over 4400% and that's not it we even see how a company like mazda industries which did not even have a workspace was touching prices to which only the sky was the limit harshad would make penny stocks turn into multi baggers and book profits and then exit this was all a part of his pump and dump scheme talking about the wolf now a rat hole is a friend like brad here who held stock in his name from me he's supposed to be a technical joke I'd drive the price up, then he'd sell and kick most of the profits back to you guessed it, me. All cash, none of it's on the books. A big no-no of course in the eyes of the law. An IPO is an initial public offering. It's the first time a stock is offered for sale to the general population. Now as the firm taking the company public, we set the initial sales price and sold those shares right back to our friends. The I- look I know you're not following what I'm saying anyway, right? That's that's okay. That doesn't matter. The real question is this: Was all this legal? Absolutely not. But we were making more money than we knew what to do with. One particular example: the Steve Madden IPO was allowed to be listed in Nasdaq only if Stratton, the underwriter, had kept five percent of the stock. Instead of the two million units being offered in the IPO, one million of them went into the accounts of his rat holes. Jordan bought back those units from his rat holes at five point five dollar per share, as he had arranged earlier. At one p.m., we opened the stock for sale at four dollars and fifty cents a share. By one o three, it was over eighteen dollars. Even the big Wall Street firms were buying. Of the two million shares offered for sale, a million belonged to me, held in phony accounts by my rat holes. Now, once the price hit the high teens, you know what? Who gives a shit? As always, the point is this: twenty-two million dollars in three. Now we leave it to you to decide whether what they did was ethical or not. 